we go. What is going on, everyone? Happy New Year's to you guys. We have not done one of these episodes in a very long time, but welcome to a brand new sweet podcast with your great host. I'm being Zach and I am Cody Curtis. And why do we, again, why, why is this called the sweet podcast? Well, if you're new here, since it's been a while and we've gained some subscribers <laughs> since then, the sweet podcast, yes. And it's a new year. The sweet podcast. Well, it's called the sweet podcast. Cause if you remember that show, the sweet life of Zach and Cody, this is me and Cody's or Cody's and I's sweet life of Zach and Cody, but the sweet <laughs> podcast of Zach and Cody. Um, this is exactly what we'll be doing today. It's called the Sweet Podcast of Zach and Cody. We are going to be discussing movies. We're going to be having fun. We're just going to be talking about porn and whatnot, but maybe not porn. Yeah, today. of course. <laughs> but um, what we are going to be talking about is something that we started last year was a segment where we're kind of just guessing about the Oscars. And uh, this is broken down into certain segments. The last one that we did was we did if the Oscars were tomorrow, what would be nominated? And we really dived into it and only picked the films that we had seen. Now, a majority of these films we've already seen. And now we yep. can really finalize before the Oscars do come out what will be the nominations. Now, we're not doing every category. We're really only doing a couple of the sort of ones. But don't worry. When the Oscars are announced, me and Cody will be getting together either that day or the day after to get you guys an episode of another one of these where we do talk about what should win, what will win, and what was snubbed. That's going to be fun because I'm feeling some snubs coming this way. Yep, I am as well. And you know what? Just... Uh... Just as a heads up for those of you who are new, once again, thank you for showing up. This podcast, funny enough, this podcast was originally called the Sweet Film Podcast, but we switched it up to the Sweet Podcast because Zach and I, on the show, we're talking about the Oscars, we're talking about movies today, but we wanted to talk more about movies, more than just movies, because Zach and I, we both love television shows, video games, pretty much everything to deal with the entertainment industry as a whole, but that's not what we're talking about today, and we may just have an announcement at the end of this podcast for a very special award show that's coming up soon. Yeah, it's not the Golden Globe, so that's cool. Um, and just so you know, guys, not every episode starts out kind of like this, where we're just like explaining a ton of stuff. We really this is just an, a show where we shoot the shit, we talk with each other, we have fun, we get to the topics. Sometimes we bounce around, we talk about everything, and sometimes we do do coherent, just straight. We're doing this, that's it. Leave us alone. Um, and again, Thank if you, you have any questions nice. of what you want us to do, please tell us down below. Um, but this will be fun. Um, before we really get into this, though, I do want to ask um, Cody anything you've seen lately? Any uh, movies? Any uh, video games you've played? Are you excited for Resident Evil Two? Uh, I'm excited for for Resident Evil Two. Yeah, but it's been a little while since I've had the chance to actually sit down and play some video games, only because my schedule's been like super overly booked. But Kingdom Hearts is coming out this month, so I'm excited about that as well. And besides that, mostly I've been relaxing, saw the upside a couple of nights ago. Not oh, bad. but I I did actually return to start watching a show that I began watching last year, and that's the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which oh, we okay. may uh, we you might have me. To... I thought you said Game of Th I thought you were gonna say Game of Thrones. No, so. but that actually is one of my goals for this year is to start watching Game of Thrones and Westworld. You need but... to finish Game of Thrones before April, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah it comes back if i didn't have a life i probably no. would but <laughs> look at this no 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 no, no 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 we're gonna set a goal for you once a day you watch one episode one episode a day i guarantee you will be done think about it there's 10 episodes per season one episode a day that is less than an hour for you it's like 40 minutes of your life once a day you're gonna watch okay. one Game of Thrones episodes one a day, one a day, maybe okay. more, maybe more, because you'll be addicted. <laughs> but one a day. Well, actually, I guess I've got a little bit more time because I remember I told you a little while ago I finished the first season of Game of Thrones, like yes, so that's five, what I'm six saying. months like, ago. You have so. the time. So today, yeah, starting today, okay. as we film this, season two, episode one. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. I can do Everyone that. <laughs> if he doesn't make it by April, he has to suck my dick. 
Okay, that's uh. We're that... not making that deal. No, you have to buy me. Pizza. <laughs> you have to buy me pizza. Okay, if I do not reach that, if I don't reach this goal of being ready for the final season of Game of Thrones by April, then when I come out to see you no, this no, summer, no, 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 no. I it's have to right. just buy. I'm gonna call you in the middle of the night when I'm drunk, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you you're gonna order me pizza right now to my house with your <laughs> yeah. card because you can do this, and I'm gonna tell you this is my address. You're gonna order pizza, so you're gonna send it to me, <laughs> and, I'm gonna it. and you think I'm joking, but this. This is really gonna happen, okay? Okay, 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 deal. Okay. Virtual handshake, virtual handshake. So, guys, that, that is the show. Uh, the upside is actually not that bad of a film, you guys should check it out. Um, same with no. you with Kingdom Hearts. Right. Once Kingdom Hearts comes out, you guys will not see for me. I've made sure on my schedule planner right here to well, I have three screenings that week, but other than that and velvet buzzsaw, <laughs> velvet buzzsaw comes out that week too did you see the trailer for velvet buzzsaw yeah i'm a i'm uh i'm a 10 out of 10 but... i'm not even nervous at all <laughs> i want to see it in theaters i'm hoping for some reason it is in theaters out here because it said select theaters i hope they played it in art house here because it would make sense i am yeah. so excited I, why didn't this trailer come out before i made my top 10 list because this would have been know. number five I'm not even joking. This was shot to number five. Just, I, just dude, I, I, the trailer love, alone, dude. I loved that trailer. If you guys have not seen Velvet Buzzsaw yet, it is a trailer. It's a new film coming on Netflix. It's by the guy who directed Roman J. Israel. But maybe you guys didn't see that film, but you probably did see his film Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Renee Russo. They're also coming back to tag team in this film, and it's a horror thriller film, and that's where I'll leave it at. Watch the trailer. Oh, wait and get surprised. I'm not. No. I don't want to say the twist in it. No way. Wait a second. Is this the? Is this the uh, Renee? Is this the Jake Gyllenhaal horror movie that we've been talking about all year? Yes. Did you saw the trailer, right? I did see the trailer. Hold. It says in the trailer from I, the director of Nightcrawler. I forget. It hate shows my Rene life Russo. Because... No, guys, point this. Screw it. Most anticipated film of the year. That's it. Cody's an idiot. Yep. Well, sometimes. <laughs> what was your What was your most anticipated film of this year? It. Chapter I don't think. Yeah, I was about to say it wasn't Avengers. Yeah, so yours is it. Chapters because no. like my top five, I think was Avengers. Number two was Us. Number three was toy story four number four was shazam and let me can i say this one thing everyone needs the hashtag warner brothers there was a christmas sweater shazam shirt that they were sending to everyone and it had a logo shazam with all christmas lights on it and every time they said shazam it would light up everyone hashtag warner brothers and say zach pope watches trailer reaction for the first shazam if they don't want to send me a sweater after that i will be very depressed yeah i i okay that's phenomenal I it's didn't awesome. even I didn't even know that was going on. Now I want one of those darn things. Yeah. But my yeah, my top three anticipated films for the year, or I guess tied at number three was Avengers Endgame and Joker, and then two and one were Us and It Chapter Two. Yeah, no, then those are great ones. Um, but Cody, people are probably screaming at us already that we should just start. We came here for the Oscar yeah. talk, and well, yeah, you were going to get the Oscar talk. Yep, trolls are coming right around back. I'm a little troll. What are you guys? Why aren't you talking about was, the Oscars? Every time, every time someone annoys me at work and I'm like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but I, I do my troll voice and they're like, you sound like troll. I'm like, that's the point. That's I'm a little the... troll. Let me go under my bridge and fuck you up. Let me go under my bridge and fuck you up. Also, guys, if you guys don't have time to watch this on YouTube, you guys can definitely check it out on iTunes. Cody, you're going to be getting it on iTunes, right? Yes. Cool. Possibly. You guys catch up with the other episode. No, no possibly. <laughs> new year, new resolution. Yeah. Every single time. Every single time on there. Um, we got this though. We're excited to talk about it. And the first category we will be talking about is best picture. So how we're gonna do it? We think there's gonna be like 78 nominations, possibly more, but I think seven or eight is a pretty good suggestion. What about you? Yeah, I think okay. seven or eight is good. So, I, so I'm gonna li I'm gonna list out mine, and when I list out mine, whatever you then we'll have you read yours, and we'll have a discussion. All right. So, no particular order. Um, no particular order. There, there's two that are sneaking in, but the definitive ones is the favorite, A Star Is Born, Green Book, Roma, 
Black Panther, Black Klansman, Vice, and I have two that could sneak in. Okay? And I think Vice could even kick out too. I think there's two that could sneak in. First Man, I know people don't think it could, but I actually think it has a chance. And Bohemian Rhapsody after that win last night. Um, and my honorable mention for it is if Bill Street could talk. I think that's another one that could sneak in, but I don't have a lot of hope for it, but I wish it would. Um, Cody, what about your list? What did I miss? Uh, okay, so for my list, as far as the eight are concerned, I think that it's going to be Black Panther, Green Book, Black Klansman, A Star is Born, Vice, The Favorite, Eighth Grade, and Roma. Now, Eighth Grade? Yeah, I, I have a I have a suspicion that it's going to sneak in there. Although people aren't talking about it as much as some of these other no films. No Bohemian the Rhapsody. List. You really don't think no. Bohemian Rhapsody will get no. in? Well, I think there's an off chance that it will, but the Golden Globes, I have found over the years, it's not something Dude, that I really... I, I mean, it doesn't, but still, that uh, win pushed it a little yeah, bit for me. I, I know, but... It, if there's one thing I've found out is that the Golden Globes is not really a, re a representation of what will be nominated at the Oscars. That's well, right. why that's why a couple of the honorable mentions I have, number one, even though it hasn't been pushed out that much, is Hereditary is one, and then the other one is The Wife. The Wife, Glenn Close got that win at the Golden Globes the other night. It wasn't pushed all that much for the Golden Globes, but I have a feeling we all know that the Oscars can be very hoity-toity when it comes to this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think The Wife does have a possibility of being pushed into the Best Picture category. Also, let me mention this Cold War, I think, and also is, a, is another foreign film or even shoplifters are burning – it has that little love, but the Academy is a little bit different. Now, when it comes to foreign films, that's – I feel like the Academy is like, oh, I don't want to watch a black and white film. And people might say, oh, that's not true, but that is true. That's There are normal people in the Oscars too. So. <laughs> yeah. True. Um, very, very yeah, true. Um, out of the ones that we listed, who do you think will win? Uh, I think – it's either going to be Green Book or I think there's a, also a big And now, wait, before you say Green Book, I know you already said it. People are yeah. going to freak out. Listen, this is what we're guessing, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not like, like – don't get me wrong. I kind of want Green Book to win, but – Yeah. I would rather see, like, Black Panther or Star is Born or Favored or even Roma win. So – Yeah. But yeah, go I mean, on before I. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, Roma was a phenomenal film. I think it will turn out kind of like it did at the Golden Globes. I think Alfonso Cuaron will win another award. We'll be talking about here, but I don't think Roma will win Best Picture. It'll either for me either be Black Klansman, Green Book, or A Star Is Born. Those are my uh, top three. Black Panther. I think Black Panther is a huge shot. Same with the favorite. Um, the reason I say the favorite is because Fox Searchlight, every time they put one of these films out later in the year, the same time slime, time slot, it always wins. Spotlight and Shape of Water were two of those films. I'll gotcha. All right, so now All moving right. on to uh, Best Actor. Um, the ones I have is Remy Malik, Bradley Cooper, Christian Bale, Viggo Mortensen, and John David Washington. You know same the funny two. thing we... Yeah, exact same yeah, list. I um, but I, I think this is the definitive list. I don't see any yeah. other guy getting in. Um, are there any guy performances you would put in here? Um, out of the ones you've listed, no. I think that besides any other list, I think these are really the most remarkable por performances of the entire. And year. personally, the only person who I think has a chance of not getting in this list is John David Washington. That, and I, I think he's yeah. excellent. But I think he has the chance of not getting in. Um, personally, I, I would I want him nominated, but I think there might be a slight chance he doesn't get nominated. Um, I think Remy Malek, Bradley Cooper, Christian Bale, Vigo are locks, hundred yeah. percent locks. And I think it's really going to go. This is this is the great year about the Oscars. There's no definitive winner this year. You know what I mean? Like there's a, <laughs> yeah. there's a couple locks in some categories that we'll get to. But there's not that one where I'm like, oh, there, th that like Remy Malik has it. I can't tell you that. Bradley yeah, Cooper no. could easily win. Christian Bale could easily win. Vigo Mortensen could win. 
Yeah, uh, I guess I'll slightly disagree with that. Like, I love Viggo Mortensen, but really I think it's going to be between Rami Malek, Bradley Cooper, and uh, Christian Bale as far as who's going to get the Oscar. Well, and, and I was doing that, but the reason I see Viggo's a dark horse. Don't forget, dude, he's won yeah. some stuff. He's already won some awards for his role, so... Yeah, and it's, true. It's Vigo Mortensen. It's Vigo Mortensen. I know. And I know everybody on planet Earth is cheering for Rami Malik to win. I'm cheering for him to win. Hey, but I, I, I will say everyone. Say, I, I will I'll say that although I am cheering for Malik to win, if Bradley Cooper or Christian Bale wins that award instead, I'm not going to complain. Personally, although, I want Cooper or Malik to win. I want Cooper or Malik to win. Yeah. I love Christian Bale. I think he probably has the highest chance personally um put aside whatever you thought about vice yeah but cooper or malik i think personally i think they did the best cooper was legit singing yeah and that's hard that's, <laughs> that's hard. true um, and so was so was rami malik he, I yeah. mean, is, he went on. is there anyone that you would personally put in here though like for best actor like from this year that you were like i wish like they could get put in here i mean um if- if there was an outside chance, the only other person that I could think of is um is John Krasinski. Okay, He's like be the, honest, I want Steve Carell for Beautiful Boy. Nice, nice. Or Lucas Hedges, or Lucas Hedges for Boy for Boy Erased. Damn, yeah. no, I thought I, personally, I think he was the fourth best performance of this year. Just saying, just saying. Okay, I can understand that. Um, best actress, you ready? Yep, let's do it. Pretty sure it's going to be this one. Olivia Coleman, Lady Gaga, Melissa McCarthy, Glenn Close, and, hear me out, Viola Davis for Widows. With an honorable mention of Emily Blunt. I think it's going to go Emily Blunt or Viola Davis. That's that's amazing. Holy what are, what's yours? What's yours? Okay, so for me, I have... Funny enough, she's not an honorable mention for me. I actually think she will be nominated, but Emily Blunt... Lady I'll, Gaga. I'll get, my, I'll get to my thoughts on why I don't think she will, but we'll uh, talk about it. Okay, so Emily Blunt, Glenn Close, I think is definitely a lock. Um, Lady Gaga. Um, I think, funny enough, I think that Emma uh, Emma Stone will be not not. She's, she's supporting actress. She's supporting she, actress. Yes, she'll gosh, be. She will not dang be it. Best actress. She's only supporting. Okay, well, if that's the case, I will push Emma Stone out and put Viola Davis in. Okay. Um, and then my last one, as far as no Melissa McCarthy, <laughs> no, not not Melissa McCarthy, but I know it's it's not Tony, a lock, but Tony I think Collette. I think there is a outside chance that yeah, Tony Collette will could be nominated. Well, I, I'm just saying it's an outside shot. Now it's an far outside as, shot. It's a very I, fucking outside shot. That's like me I, throwing the basketball court in my asshole neighbor's <laughs> lawn and expecting to climb his fence to go get it back. Now, as far as honorable mentions are concerned, Elsie even Fisher. though I know that well, Elsie Fisher is one, but another one who I know won't be nominated, but I want to mention here is Charlize Theron for Tully. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I dude, I think she probably has a stronger chance than um Tony Collette. Personally, I would love to see either. Dude, don't get me wrong. I would scream. I would scream. <laughs> when I do my reaction like to listen to him, I'm going to scream ah! if I hear Tony Collette. That's just the truth. <laughs> um, But yeah. But dude, uh, let me say this. You didn't see Can You Ever Forgive Me? And fucking no one has. Melissa McCarthy will get nominated. She will get nominated for an Oscar. And I will, I will go as far as say she is a very dark horse in this race. I dude, I'm not. I if she would to win, I would not be surprised. Wow, really? I think she's a dark horse. She's it's an, a long shot dark horse, but I think it comes down to Lady Gaga or Glenn Close, and then Melissa McCarthy right underneath them. Okay, her perform. I'm not joking when I say this. Her performance in that film is so fucking good. It, it it's. If I were to honestly go as far as say, I think she is the second best in this category. She's tied with Glenn Close for me. What? Seriously? That's incredible. Yes. Um, also, the reason I put Viola Davis in over Emily Blunt is because the BAFTA Awards Emily Blunt was shut out. Gotcha. But she was not shut out of the SAG Awards. 
So it's a 50-50 thing for me there of her or Davis getting in because Davis got in the BAFTAs. So again, it's really 50-50 there. I personally don't care who gets in. I would be happy with either of them. That's just the honest truth. But yeah, that, that's oh. just the honest truth. I, I would be happy with either one of them. And I will not freak out if one of them are not in it. Um, really the top four, Olivia Coleman, Lady Gaga, Melissa McCarthy, and Glenn Close are the only four that I think definitively are locks into this category. Gotcha. Um, let's move on to sporting action. You ready? Yeah. Timothy Shalman, which should win, but he won't. Marsha Ali, Richard E. Grant, Adam Driver. And I had Sam Rockwell in here, but we, as we were talking about it, I actually have an outside pick for a nomination, and that is Michael B. Jordan from Black Panther and Sam Rockwell as an honorable mention. Okay, that's incredible. We have, for the most part, we have the same list. Okay. Uh, Mahersha Ali, Timothy Chalamet, Adam Driver, and then I had Sam Rockwell for, I for my list. He was just fine, though. Like, he was good, but I didn't think he was anything special. He did more of an impersonation than he did a acting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. And then my last one is Sam Elliott for, for oh. Star is Born. Okay, I, okay, this is the reason I say this. I forget about Sam Elliott. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Which I think, and, and he's so good in the movie. He's so good. But for some reason, I keep forgetting about him. Gotcha. But that um, is uh that's my list. And as far as I think the three that are locks are Shalmi, Ali, and Richard E. Grant. I think those are the locks okay. into okay. that category. Driver, Elliot, Rockwell are the ones to sneak in. Michael B. Jordan is the one that I honestly think Dark Horse thing that he could just slide in there. Gotcha. He's really good, man. He's so good in that movie. So, yeah. What about you? Any, anyone else? Uh, I think I, think I would want the than... dad from eighth grade too. I think he was good. Um, yeah. I have I have one that makes me mad that this film's not getting any Oscar love. Like it, uh, Cody. It pisses me off. It pisses me off that this film is not getting Oscar love. What? The hate you give. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. And. Even if the film wasn't getting love, where the fuck is Russell Hornsby, the dad? Best supporting <laughs> actor personally would go to him for me. Okay. I can best, that. best supporting actress or actor performance. But instead of me bitching and moaning, what as are far your. As, I, what? I was going to say, as far as a dark horse. I think that Sam Elliott is kind of the dark horse of this entire uh, award season for, for best supporting actor. Yeah. Cause he's been let out a lot. True. I just True. think when you watch a star is born, he's really good, but ever you come away thinking of Cooper or Gaga. Yeah. The whole cast True. is good though. Even um Andrew Dice Clay is yeah. freaking amazing. He's amazing Dave, in this Dave Chappelle. He's good. He was good. But I mean, when I walk away, I forget Dave Chappelle's in the film. Uh, best yeah, Supporting true. Actress, though. Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, Claire Foy, Amy Adams. And I'm sure some people were like, where's Regina King? I have Regina King in there. I also have her getting snubbed. It's going to be an uphill battle for her. I think she should get in. But if I'm going to be personally honest, who should win this category for me? Emma Stone or Claire Foy? All righty. Regina King was really good in Beale Street. But I don't know why, but Claire Foy and Emma Stone's performance has really stuck with me. What about you? What what is your what's your list? Okay, so this is a uh, this is definitely uh gosh, I think I'm gonna cancel that out because that film didn't get any love whatsoever, what? and it's a shame. Okay, so I'll put Emily Blunt, Claire Foy, Amy Adams, Emma Stone, and Rick. Rachel Weiss. The one that I was going to put by decided against was Thomas and McKenzie for leave no trace. Yeah. Cause no. if it, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, she, she, I love it, but it's, she, sh yeah. she should be nominated. But once again, that's what snubs are for. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think Emily Blunt could get in over Regina King for a quiet place. Right. I think even a quiet place has a chance of getting best picture nom, but I can understand that. Personally, dude, if I were to go up to Best Picture, I would take Vice out. I would take Bohemian Rhapsody out. 
and I would slide if Beale Street could talk, and I would probably slide. Um, we were just talking about it. What what do we say? Leave no trace, or no, or uh, the other one. A um, quad. A quiet, a quiet place? place? I would have slide a quiet, a quiet Place in there. I think A Quiet Place was a better made film than Hereditary. I can understand that. Like, as a full way through, that was a better made film than A Quiet Place. Or, than a Hereditary. Hereditary. Um, but yeah, I, Best Sporting Actress, again, if Regina King gets nominated, she'll win. That, that's it. She'll win. Um, if she doesn't get nominated, I think it's going to mean to Claire for Emma, or Emma Stone. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Okay, Best animated okay. picture. Um, my picks are Spider Verse, Incredibles Two, Isle of Dogs, Mira, and Wreck It Ralph Two. What about you? You and I have the exact same list. Yeah, there. I mean, there wasn't like anything. Not. I. I do think though, Wreck It Ralph could get snubbed. <laughs> I do. And listen here, I think Spider Verse can get snubbed too. Really. Yeah, and I, I mean, <clears throat> Spider-Verse is my favorite film of last year. I want it to win everything. I actually think Spider-Verse has an outside shot of being nominated for uh, Best Adaptive Screenplay and even Best Picture. It won't happen, but um, I think the Academy, same thing. Oh, it's a superhero movie. Why would I watch that? And yet every critic and fan loves it. <laughs> but the Oscar is not critics and fans, and that's the difference. That's true. Um, that's let's true. put it this way. If the Boss Baby can get nominated in this category, anything can happen in this category. <laughs> yep. But um, if Spider-Verse gets nominated, I think it wins. Um, if it doesn't get nominated, it goes between Incredibles 2 or Isle of Dogs. True. Anything different from you? No, I, I don't. Honestly, for this, I think it's going to come down to... I don't necessarily think Spider-Verse will be snubbed, but I, I think it's going it. it, to it's gonna come down between Spider-Verse and Isle of Dogs. It's going to be between those Which two. Which is insane to me because I would rather... I liked Isle of Dogs, but it has not stuck with me at all. I've had no interest to go back and rewatch it. What about you? And, dude, yeah, no. Mira... I don't think you've seen Mira yet. That is such a beautiful anime film. No. It's so amazing. Um, cinematography though. You ready? Yep, go for it. Roma, 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 well, and I Roma. Think, I think we know what you're voting for. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I think Roma is the one to beat. Uh, um, Dark Horse, the first man, or if Bill Street could talk. Uh, Cold War and The Favorite are also in there for me, but really my list is Roma, Cold War, First Man, The Favorite, and if Bill Street could talk with Roma winning, Roma also winning, and Roma winning again, but Dark Horse is being Ipio Shikataka first, man. Okay. Uh, for me, as far as uh, cinematography goes, it's A Star is Born, First Man, Roma, 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 and Roma, uh, but also Bohemian Rhapsody, and then Mission Impossible Fallout, which... Those are good ones. Those are good ones. Um, I think... Which, I think but, it, yeah. Or I think Bill Street, Cold War, and First Man don't have the highest chances. I just have a personal thing in my heart thinking they will. But I think A Star is Born, that's one that could get in there. Um, some other things, too. Yeah. Uh, directing, though. This is going to be a big category. Yep. And I, I'm staking my claim on one of these directors. I don't think it will happen. But I really want it to. All right, you ready? Yeah, go for it. On the Quran. I think he wins it no matter what. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Bradley Cooper. I think he has a dark horse chance of winning. Yep. Spike Lee. Don't kill me, Internet. I'm just saying my predictions because he's won. he's been nominated in every other one. Peter Farley. And my last one, and I really hope he gets nominated for this because I would love to see him get nominated. It's more of as a collaborative thing from everything else the guy's ever done. Ryan Coogler. I think he, really yes. Um, personally, mm -hmm. if I when I'm looking at the list that everyone's like putting out there, Ryan Coogler's the name that doesn't show up a lot. But I think when the Oscars come down, he's very respected in this guy. Think about it. Jordan Peele got nominated last year. Ryan Coogler could get nominated. Um, an outside shot though is Barry Jenkins. True. Okay, so, so mine. I, um, for Adam mine, could, too, could also get in. 
I have Alfonso Coron, and this is where I was saying I- I'm pretty sure that it's going to end up like the Golden Globes. I think Coron is going to win Best mm-hmm. Director at the Oscars. But other than that, it's Bradley Cooper, Spike Lee, Peter Farley, and then Outside Shot, just because of how great of a directorial debut it was, uh, Bo Burnham. That's my, that's my that's dark horse. Outside. That's for to get nominated, but my real dark horse, so I think there's a possibility of him getting into the Oscars, is Ari Aster for Hereditary. I think Cody, there is an Cody, out, fuck out. off, get the fuck off Hereditary. <laughs> stick. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not getting nominated, it's getting snubbed. I will bet you another pizza that it's not getting nominated. I am not taking that bet, but this is my I don't even care. Hey, it's not, it's hey, not in my listen. list. Damien Chazelle has a better fucking chance than Ari Oster. Or Look, Ari I'm Aster. Just, I am just saying. Fucking the Academy has a better chance of nominating Jordan Peele on accident again. It's, Forget it's, out. A, it's an honorable mention. I'm not saying it's actually going to happen. Have an, dude, they have. There ain't no even honorable mentions. Kevin Smith could get nominated for directing an episode of The Flash. Before Harry Oster would get nominated for the Oscars. But he wasn't, was he? Fuck off. I think he has a better <laughs> fucking, let me, let me, Listen, Meryl Streep <laughs> will have a better chance of getting an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress and Mary Poppins than Harry Astor, Tony Collette, Alex Wolf, Nat Wolf, whatever the fuck Wolf it is. <laughs> cinematography. I'm it sorry. It's not getting nominated. If you say Hereditary one more time, I will shove my dick. Down, what? Your throat. Yo. I'll cut it off and send it there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh my gosh, Zach, you were on a tirade. You know, you know, also could win <laughs> over. Oh, even get nominated before Ari Aster. Do you want to know? Absolutely. I wasn't going to say Jonah Hill. <laughs> yeah, no. Luke Guadagnino no. for Suspiria. Fucking um, no. Ron no Howard for Solo. I don't think no, no, yes, yes, no, yes. For yes. solo, are you freaking yes. kidding me? John no, Krasinski. yes, John yes. Krasinski, John Krasinski, I will agree with. There's probably a better shot, but I don't care. It's my list, and I say it's an honorable mention. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. Well, your list sucks. I had pretty much the exact same list as you, buddy. Yeah, I said Ari Oster. I gave up and Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham, I agree with though. I, I I think he could get in. I would personally put him in over Peter Farley. That's just me though. If I hear Hereditary one more time, though, I will yell at you <laughs> on this last category we're gonna go oh, to. Oh, Hereditary! And our last category, guys, is best score. Oh, yep, Hereditary. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. My my category, my nominations are: First Man, If Bill Street Could Talk, Black Klansman. Isle of Dogs and Mary Poppins Returns. Okay, for me, I had a few of the same. I had Black Klansman. Um, I also had Black Panther in here. That's a good uh, one. Black Klansman, Black Panther. Ma- if Mary, uh, not if Mary Poppins, right? Mary if Poppins, Mary Poppins could talk. <laughs> Mary Poppins could talk. Do you know Mary Poppins can talk, Cody? Uh, Mary Poppins oh, Returns. I'm Mickey Mouse and I'm going to buy out the Oscars. I'm going to host it myself. <laughs> Mary Poppins Returns. Stop, stop talking. I'm Mary Poppins and I'm oh, going to host it. it myself. Mary first, Mickey Mouse Poppins. First man. And then another, uh, and then I think that Mission Impossible Fallout may have a shot of getting be best honest? score. Can yes. I be honest? I only heard yes. one of your toys. Yeah, I was what? talking like Mickey Mouse. I was only talking. I was talking like Mickey Mouse. Uh, first okay. man I heard. Uh, who else? Yeah. Okay. So Black Klansman, Black Panther, First Man, Mary Poppins Returns, and then I think there is an outside shot that Mission Impossible Fallout could be nominated. You know what to. else? I think is also an outside shot. Uh, Quiet Place. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that's. I think that one has an outside shot. I think a Quiet Place. I think it's kind of that little dark film that's chugging along. I think best screenplay is another one for that one. Um, and I know and, we're not talking about screenplay, but I actually have the screenplay for a quiet place and reading it looks amazing. It, it really is like a one of a kind thing. 
I'll also say that for another outside shot as far as an honorable mention is concerned, I feel as though either what was I going to say? Oh yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Like outside outside shot, I think it might have a chance to get into best soundtrack. Well, there's no soundtrack. Well, school, you know what? Well, if that's the case then it doesn't... I I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Do your fucking research, you fucking okay. loser. <laughs> oh yeah, great. Just like the troll on my uh Roma. I'm movie. a troll. <laughs> Mickey, I didn't know you were a troll. Oh, I'm a troll all the time, boy. I'm a but troll. I also um uh, it won't be nominated, but a shout out for me is hereditary. The... I'm gonna smack no, you in the face. No, no, well that was good, but no, the score that I was gonna talk about is the score for eighth grade. I really enjoyed oh, the yeah, score that for was eighth really grade. Good. That was really good. Um so let's talk about some films that aren't gonna get nominated but will. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can talk about hereditary now. Okay, Hereditary. No, no, I mean, Hereditary is good. There are other films I want to talk about. But I think we can agree Hereditary is going to be a big snub this year. Yeah, no, I think Hereditary. See, here's the thing. You know what film I actually think? I think First Reform is another one. That's a snub. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Mission Impossible Fallout's a snub. Uh, it's so good. And if this year, at the end of the year, wasn't as strong as it was, I still think Fallout's still one of the best films of the year. But like, yeah. when it comes to Academy members, I I seriously think Fallout's gonna be missing. Um, even though Fury Road got nominated yeah, for another Bruno film for Best Road. Actress, uh, Kira Knightley and Colette was amazing. Casey Cosley would back me up on that. She was brilliant in that film. When um, not did see it? No, it, it dude, it went so small. It it sucks. Um, it's How, out on Blu Ray now. It's out on Blu Ray now. So you know, isn't sure. that the same with uh with Lizzie? That uh, Lizzie was not good enough to even get not it. The performance was good, but definitely not the whole film. Um, actually, I wouldn't even say the performance. Like when I look at, I would never kick any of these people out for those performances. I think Widows is getting snubbed personally. I don't know about. Oh, I wonder, did dude. you like? Yeah, you liked Widows, yeah, didn't you? I loved, I loved Widows. Widows. Yeah, see, I and loved I, Widows too. Honestly, Elizabeth I, the Becky, Elizabeth yeah. the Becky, best supporting actress. I mean, that's the, another thing that I would say is uh, David Kaluuya for Best Supporting Actor. You mean Daniel Kaluuya? Daniel Kaluuya, yes. Da- Under, David okay. Kaluuya. What was we I thinking? These episodes, it's really early, so I'll give us the benefit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Daniel Kaluuya for, for I think. You know, do you know, I need to look up the actor because I always forget it. Dude, there's one actor, though, that is in Beale Street, and he's also in Widows. He should be nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his Ooh, one yeah, season. Fuck off! <laughs> no, it's um, Brian Tr- Tyree Hill- Henry. He plays the guy in Widows who wants his money back. Yeah, and okay. He's also in Bill Street and has probably the best scene in the whole film. Wow! And okay, the most emotional and power. I'm not Joe. I'm gonna go watch Bill Street again today. I love that film. <laughs> I, I simply kick myself in the ass for not putting it in my top ten of last year. It was so damn good. Um, and I'm seeing it tomorrow. Yeah, just see it tonight. I would if I didn't have to work. Call out. <laughs> yeah, that'll go over well. Here's the thing. Kingdom Hearts 3, work. Movies, work. <laughs> Sex, work. I wouldn't know. <laughs> no don't you dare but uh yeah no that it i'm really i'm fun I'm, I'm i'm about this oscar category and it's gonna be fun seeing what actually gets snubbed and what yeah. doesn't i'll tell you what i think more than just uh best actress um i think the wife is gonna be snubbed at the oscars like it'll be nominated for best actress but i also think that it should be nominated for best screenplay too or best adapted yeah. screenplay yeah. um i'd rather have leave no trace or you were really never there yeah. okay yeah like, okay, uh, I can agree with that. I think actually. Lane Ramsey and uh, Deborah Granick are getting snubbed for directing. I think uh, Ben Foster is getting n- snubbed yeah. for. Dude, for... I think his performance was just good. I think it's his daughter, um, Thomas, Thomas McKenzie, and McKenzie. That was so good in that film. Um, oh yeah. Um, I think Jonah Hill. I think mid nineties was brilliant for best director. Yeah, I think mid. Yeah. Uh, not a script, script, not not more script than a director. Um, his director Lucas Hedges. 
Boy Lucas Racing. Hedges was in mid nineties too. Yeah. Do you know what actress I forgot to talk about? Do you uh, forget to talk about Lady Gaga? Nicole Kidman for best actress. I think she has a chance of getting in for Destroyer. Dang. Destroyer was That's I, right. I didn't like Destroyer. I, I liked it. I liked it. I didn't love it. I wanted to. She's really good. She's fucking really good in it. Um, but the other one for <laughs> supporting actress, also her for Boy Erased. But personally, the best performance in that film to me was Russell Crowe for best supporting actor. <laughs> I think it's the best performance he's done since Gladiator. Personally. Wow. Dude, the, I, yeah. the emotion, I, I loved that. Boy Erased. Um, another dark horse for best actor, Old Man the Gun. Um, um I, why can't I think of his? I literally uh, just pulled, I just had Robert like, Redford. Some, yes, I he can get in, he's retiring. That could easily go to it. That's true. It's gonna be an interesting, interesting list. Yes, it is so, for sure. But I think that's where we're gonna cut this episode off, guys. Um, thank you guys again so much for watching this. Make sure to let us know what your predictions are. Do you guys agree with us? Do you not? Do you think Cody's an idiot for even bringing up hereditary? <laughs> why, 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 why? I guess we'll have to debate again later down the road. And we um, have an announcement. Well, yeah, we actually have two. I have two announcements. All right, do it. Um, Let's I'll do the first out. one because you don't, you know what the second one is. The yeah. first announcement is for a segment that me and Cody wanted to do last year. But we never got to because busy, busy, busy. What we are going to do it this year, I haven't even brought it up with him, but we still do have our first two competitors that will be in it. And it is called the Sweet Film Trivia. Ding, ding, yeah! ding, ding, ding. Yeah, we are doing it. Um, Cody, we're going to plan to do it by the end of February. All right, nice. And nice, our first two competitors nice. that should be doing it, and they know they're doing it because I talked to them months ago, <laughs> and Ryan O'Toole will be our first competitors Give them a round of applause. Uh, Woo! It will be recorded. It won't be live. And it will definitely be fun. Um, but yeah. Cody, what's the other announcement? The other announcement, guys, if you did not see the announcement Zach put up on his channel earlier, the Sweet Film Awards is back. We are planning to have it up by February 16th and February 17th of this year we've got things ready to go pretty much we're just on our way to get our nominations and we'll be keep an eye on zach's channel everybody because we will be sending out announcements as time goes on until the show comes out which we are planning to get out right before the oscars so we can snipe them just like we did last year absolutely um yeah so it'll be fun guys uh make sure to look out for that make sure to look out for more announcements on that if you're new here consider hitting that like and subscribe button I mean it. Guys, uh, hit that like and subscribe button. It really pushes us forward. It gets us out there. Um, it helps the channel out. It helps um, the website out. And go check out the website also for Sandwich on Films, where me and Cody both do reviews on there. Um, yeah. But yeah, this will be fun. Cody, where can they find you at also? All right, guys. If you want to find me anywhere on the internet, you could either go to YouTube, which is under, uh, not underscore Cody. What am I talking? Getting to social media first. Okay, just go to the YouTube search bar and search Cody Curtis. Should be the first name that pops up. And with everything else, search underscore Cody underscore Curtis. And if you guys want to see written reviews by both me and Zach, we both have letterbox accounts. Finally. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? So if you want to check out the written work that Zach and I are currently doing, it's www.letterboxd.com. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much for watching this. You guys know what I'm going to say. I'll see you soon and stay classy. <laughs>